All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video of the Explain series. This is Iman Shu from Salesforce Makes Sense, and in this video, we are going to cover a very important, very crucial topic that's sharing. Right? Sharing is something that everyone is troubled with. Uh, what has gone wrong? What has happened with this record? Why am I not getting the access? How is the right kind of access defined? Where can I set it? What all places can I set it? Pretty much everything is some is, is what we are going to cover in this particular explained series. Be with me. This is going to be a bit more of a theoretical kind of a video and we'll, we'll look into the org. We'll try to understand what can be configured where, what are the potential use cases, what are the problems, how you should look into sharing as a whole and uh, how can this help you as an admin or a developer to you know debug issues and uh, fix your sharing settings across the org so that the right kind of data is shared with the right kind of people right that is the plan so we'll start on that note let's get started so talking about the definition of sharing right sharing is caring yeah that's true but sometimes it might not be starting off with a joke I'm so sorry all right so the access of objects in Salesforce is controlled by object permissions right so let's say you want to share contact uh, records right so what do you do you share the object how do you share it you do it by setting up object permissions what are object permissions read create edit delete view all modify all right those are the permissions let's take a look at Salesforce I'll constantly switch my screen from my keynote presentation to the Salesforce screen so that I can show you what I'm talking about right so if I go to profiles how do we set our very first level permissions like I mean object permissions right if I had to give access to an object right where would I do it I would do it by the profile level right or the permission set level so if I take a look at let's say one random profile you have the object settings right so this is where you can give the CRUD operations or the create read create edit delete permissions on the object level correct per object Next, the fields and the attributes of an object can be made accessible through field level permissions or field level security. So what we have done, the first thing is object permissions are given. Now inside an object, there are thousands of fields, right? How to give access on the field? You do that by giving read or edit access on the profile level for each field. That is your field level permission. Okay, so we have done that. What about the data that's created for any object? How do you control the access for data? So what we have looked at right now is the object level permission and the field level permission. What are objects and fields? They are metadata, right? So the object will be used to store your actual data, right? Be with me with uh, throughout this video and, and, and a lot of words will start to make sense. A lot of things will be clear, but you have to be very focused, okay? This is the accounts tab. I am looking at an account record. An account record has a lot of fields, right? What defines a metadata and what is data? So this particular record here, right here is data. This is one data record. This is the data of a company called Trailhead. Okay, but this particular data is formed by what? By some fields and attributes. So the rating is warm the name is trailed the SIC code is 1453 so these individual attributes make up the entire data right what are these individual attributes they are metadata data about data that's metadata right so if I have to talk what is trailed or if I had to ask about what is your name so you would say my name is Himanshu right where do you work you would say I work here in XYZ right what do you do what are your hobbies so these identifiers that give me information about myself right you can look at it as data and metadata all right so metadata comes first the object name the type of object object level permissions then comes the fields and attributes individual identifiers these two things comprise of the metadata what does metadata do it helps you derive data right and that's where you have the trailed account record so trailed account record has these identifiers or these attributes all right what do we do or what do we achieve on the profile level we achieve the metadata level permissions only on the profile level okay whether I'll be able to see the account tab or not 
whether I'll be able to access the contact records or not right sorry not the contact records whether I'll be able to create a contact record or not whether I can see all the contact records or not right whether if out of the 48 fields on the lead object do I have access to the three fields the three custom fields I have created all of this can be configured on the profile level or the permission set level which is what you see here this is the metadata permissions what layout will be assigned which record type will be assigned what is the default record type what level of object permissions do I have? Can I create a record? Yes. Can I edit the record? Yes. Can I delete the record? Yes. Can I modify pretty much any and everyone's record? No, you don't have that permission. Okay. On the field level, channel program level name. Can I see this? See what value does this field or attribute hold? Yes. Can I modify it? No. Billing address. Can I see it? Yes. Can I modify it? Yes, you can. So, profile level permissions dictate or govern the object permissions and the field level permissions that you define for each and every object okay but now once you have the metadata setup defined how do you control the records that are getting created how do you share that with people how do you share that with personas how do you share that with actors how do you define which kind of data will be shared of what kind of users is where sharing comes into the picture okay so what about data that's created for any object how do you control the access of data that's where sharing settings come into the picture and you can control the record level access to sharing settings and that is our syllabus for the video today on the explained series all right so the basic context is ready awesome let's look at the structure or the hierarchy of how sharing works and what what comes before what comes next and how you should look at sharing as a whole whenever you are looking at sharing a new object sharing an existing object removing some sharing or adding some sharing all of that how do you how do you look at it as the entire picture so the underlying object and field permissions come right below they set the pace so that's the metadata level and as you go up you are basically opening up the access we'll talk about what is the opening up of access mean okay the first thing that comes into the picture is the org wide defaults that is owd you must have heard a lot of admins and developers saying owd can you check the owd for this custom object can you check if it is read only private what is the owd for this particular um, object what is the sharing setting for this particular object in the community side you must have heard a lot of people using this word right owd that is the sharing setting or rather the org wide default that's the first level so you define the record level access on the OWD level meaning the org level meaning your company level meaning your business level okay so you say these 10 objects will be available for everyone these three objects will be available for everyone and they can modify it these seven objects will not be available to anyone only people who are who are you know special or VIP only those people will be able to access these 11 objects will be available to everyone to my managers also so those kind of settings on a global level more like a business level more like an org level more like an organization level company level is defined on the OWD that's this particular bar right here which is called OWD which is full short for org wide defaults we also call them sharing settings where do you find it if I go to the quick find box on lightning under security you have sharing settings all right so sharing settings if I do this the same in classic so under security controls, this is where you see your org wide defaults, the OWD, and this is available for all objects. Okay, so you see what you can do here is you can choose which object to look at. Let's say I want to look at cases. Okay, so I can see what is the access given for cases. I can see the org wide default for the case object. Okay, we'll deep dive into a bit later. Okay, what all of this means next is the role hierarchy now every any and every business you are in or you look at has a role hierarchy right we even have a role hierarchy in our family right you have your grandparents you have your parents then you, are, you have your siblings and you are you, you, you yourself are there and then you have your younger siblings so that's a hierarchy similarly every business has an hierarchy you might have this uh, founder and the ceo then you might have the coo cto right and uh, then you might have the uh, VP, the DSVP, the SVPs, and then you might have the regional staff, then you might have, you know, 
local employees you might have uh, contractors under the employees you might have shadow resources you might have mentors above the employees so there is a role hierarchy structure in pretty much any and every business you take a look at any sales business let's say right you will have regional uh, level presidents you would have regional level vice presidents then you would have regional level inspectors then you would have regional level contractors and all of that stuff right if you take a look at a service side uh, implementation or a service cloud business you would see you know you would have a uh, regional uh, regional staff followed by regional level uh, ground representative followed by regional level ground support staff so all of that stuff is available in a role hierarchy right someone is on the top of the ladder someone is somewhere in the middle somewhere is below who's trying to go on top so it's, it's similar to how the food chain works it's similar how your family hierarchy works it's, it's pretty much same in the business line also okay sharing can be done based on the role hierarchy level also okay and this is this is called vertical sharing why because you are doing a vertical sharing from bottom to up or bottom up or top down right you, you figure out how so for example you are managing three employees those three employees whatever they do whatever they do right you would have access to that correct which means any and everything that is shared to the three employees will implicitly share to you correct so that's how role hierarchy comes into the picture let's say you have your own manager so that manager will be able to see the visibility of yours as well as your employees the three employees that are under you so that's how the vertical sharing works even this is available on the org wide sharing setting level and you have a role hierarchy where you can maintain it so you see on the sharing settings on every object let's switch back to all objects you have something called grant access using hierarchies this checkbox defines whether for an object can the hierarchy people high above on the hierarchy than us can access what we own or not so that's the role hierarchy and where can you configure roles into the system you can go to role hierarchy here manage user roles so if i can set up roles i can have a lot of roles configured here okay so you can see this in a sorted list view or if you want to see it in a tree view which will be helpful if i expand right so you'll see all of these roles are available here okay and you can add new roles you can assign people some roles you can do a lot of stuff here all right so that is role hierarchy the next thing is sharing rules right you have your org wide settings on top of it you have given role hierarchy access superior people can access whatever you know subordinates own and all of that stuff then if you want to share something across laterally right someone who's not in the hierarchy but someone who's you know working side by side someone who's working on a separate region altogether but needs access to the same kind of data that you own how do you define that you uh, you create sharing rules okay these sharing rules can also be created for per object so if i go back to sharing settings you can create a sharing rule for each and every object okay so if i go to lead right you will see down below if i scroll down this is the list of all the objects then down below you have sharing rules for each and every object so whatever is not shared already can be shared the access can be opened up to more people let's say today five people are working on an opportunity they're working on a one million dollar deal right and three more people have to be given access because it's a very important deal for the company so they add three more people to the deal how do they give them access to all the documents all the records that are associated to this opportunity by writing a sharing rule right so you can write a sharing rule and you can give access to maybe one user maybe a group of users maybe to certain users their coordinates their subordinates all of that can be done by sharing rules okay so you can configure sharing rules to open up more access and this access is opened up laterally hope you understand lateral right more like not horizontal entirely but lateral it can be to people who are not directly related right similar to how you have it on, on the role hierarchy what about unrelated uh, users how do you share access how do you give access to them by setting up sharing rules and then finally if you're not able to do even sharing rules you want to further open up the access on a specific record level right how do you do that you buy you do that by going to the specific record and manually sharing that record all right so if you see i am currently on the trailed record this record is currently owned by himanshu and whoever has the read access or the write access can 
see it or modify it but tomorrow if i want to share this with a specific person or a specific set of user i can go to the record the individual record level and i can click on the sharing button here and this will tell me currently this is being shared with himanshu because why because he is the owner right but if i want to share it with some other people let's say the integration user needs access i can add and i can give that relevant access right why do i see the case and the opportunity because case and opportunity are child of account they are children of account and they are directly governed by how account ownership or how account sharing works okay that's why you can set okay i want to give the integration user read only access on the case and read write on the opportunity and account will also be read write i'll just say save so what this will do is this has manually i have manually shared my data with another user in the system that is your manual sharing and if you notice what we did going from bottom to up is basically we opened up access so you cannot restrict access you cannot re reduce access you can only open up access so whatever you define on your global level okay then you set up some role hierarchy so you gave access and you assign some roles so people uh, below your role hierarchy you are able to access their data but then you also wanted to work in projects that are across your team let's say some other teams projects so you needed access to their data so you created some sharing rules to share data across more like lateral and then even once that was done you wanted access to a specific data something that a user can do manually so you went with manual sharing okay so this is your bottom up and you have been able to open up access you cannot reduce or re reduce the access you can only open it up all right so that's your high level context overview of sharing all right we'll look at each of these elements individually and that will give you a better clarity i'll talk through all of the aspects of sharing and that will give you a bigger picture a clearer picture but right now i hope the context the high level brief is clear as to how sharing works and what sharing is and what all elements are are in the picture so the OWD, the role hierarchy, sharing rules, and then manual sharing. All right, great. Take a pause, take a two-minute break, and let, then let's you know jump into the next section. We'll start with OWD, the very first uh, uh, framework in the sharing settings. That's org-wide defaults. All right, so let's start with org-wide defaults, which is OWD. Right. So the very first level or the base level of sharing or rather the default access level for any object. All right. Is configured on the OWD level. That is the sharing settings on the org. Right. This bit right here. Let's go to sharing settings. So this bit right here. OK. So this is the base level. After the metadata permissions are given on the profile and permission sets, you can go to sharing settings and that's where you can start your record level access. What level of access should be given is determined on the OWD level. All right. So if I take a casual look at the objects, right. So let's take a look at, for example, let's say task. So if I look at task, there would be probably activity. So you see activity, it says that there are two columns or rather three default internal access default external access grant access using hierarchies and it says private okay what about let's say lead so lead it says public read write transfer for internal and public read write transfer for external so these are some values that are given and we see different values we see private public full access controlled by public read only read write transfer read write so there are some certain values that are available all right so the thing is that there are two types of users right one is the internal users who log into salesforce using a valid credential a username and a password right they log into the salesforce org just like how we log in right i mean how i log in the other people are people who access the sites which is the experience cloud side of the world right this is the experience cloud side and they access experience cloud correct so they log in using a credential that lets them log into a portal not the salesforce org essentially but the experience cloud portal correct so that's the second type of people and then there are another type of people who are the guest users now guest users are guests to a specific portal not to the salesforce org okay they are guests to a specific portal 
for example if you're shopping on let's say adidas.com or nike.com or you're looking you are you know browsing facebook.com right or you're browsing skyscanner what do you do uh, you either log in as a member or you continue as a guest correct so you can consider let's say this is your community or let's say this world cup tournament is your community right so people who have a valid credential to log into the system to access the world cup tournament portal are the external users and people who can access this site without a login are called the guest users all right that's experience cloud nomenclature and people who log into the salesforce org this org right here are called internal users so what salesforce does is sets up the underlying architecture for sharing in three different ways for three, these three different type of users and that is why you see these two sections available the internal and the external guest is handled separately okay so if you see internal and external that's the base level setup that you can do which means if you are logging to the salesforce org and you want to access the lead object access the access given is read write transfer meaning you can view a lead you can edit a lead and you can transfer the ownership of a lead you can do all of this th the, these three things all right what can a community user or what kind of experience cloud portal user do he can do the same thing they can also read write and transfer all right for example what about the user object user object so user object the internal access is read only meaning you can only view records you cannot edit them what about external users they they can just you know if they have created their own records they can only see them they cannot you know make any changes or look at other people's records all right so there are different variations available different type of settings and the three tiers of sharing are private public read only and public read write okay private public read only and public read write if in case you see a sharing setting that is confined to control by parent that implies that the object is a child to a parent object which governs its security and sharing now you must know that for certain standard objects like account they have a lot of account has a lot of children right it has contact opportunity uh, cases so there's a different kind of sharing setting that's available out of the box from the platform however if you create a master detailed relationship between two different objects right what happens in such cases the sharing is defined the sharing of the child object is defined by the parent so if the parent is public read only the child will automatically be public read only which is why for the child objects you will notice that it says control by parent or some control by keyword is written you will notice see control by parent what would be the parent of court it would be opportunity all right you will see campaign member so campaign member is part of which object of a campaign so it is controlled by campaign that is the ca campaign object that's the control by parent and control by object that you see apart from that we talked about the three tiers right private read only and public read write so you see private is available public read only is available and public read write is available these are the three primary uh, sharing tiers that are available for us to configure how do you configure if i just go ahead and say edit you will notice that i get a drop down to change so you see opportunity is currently set at public read write so what i can do is i can say public read only or i can move it to private so we will we'll understand what these three tiers mean but this is available to me what about uh, uh, things like let's say price book you see you have use view only no access so the idea is there are certain standard objects that have a specific kind of sharing that is defined by salesforce and that does not come into the same nomenclature as these three options which is private public read only public read write now any custom object that you create and you want to set up the sharing you will only get these three options private public read only public read write you might ask himanshu will i get the use option will i get the view only option uh, will i get a read write transfer option no you will not this is all for certain standard objects and only for certain specific objects defined by salesforce to handle the sharing mechanism okay so for custom objects you will only get these three options private public read only and public read, public read write and this is true for most of the other objects also if you notice that's the case with most of the objects except for some for example you will notice that lead has a extra uh, tier available right then you will see that price book has a different tier available you will see calendar has a different uh, sharing mechanism so certain standard objects have different mechanism all right let's go back now internal users 
right? Whenever sharing settings are modified, the sharing settings are recalculated. What does this mean? This means today, if I just say cancel here, and I'm logged in as a user, right? And it says that account and contact, or sorry, account and contract, right? It says public read write, which means I as a user should be able to see all the accounts and I should be able to edit them as well. Okay. However, if I just go ahead and say edit and I would want to change the sharing setting for accounts, right? Accounts and contracts to let's say public read only or public or private, the sharing will be recalculated, right? Which means all the records that exist in the system, their sharing will be recalculated so that I should, I am given access or I am given visibility to only the certain set of records with the right kind of access that is defined here. Okay. Based on this, uh, org wide sharing rule will run and it will recalculate what access do I have to the records. Once I set this to private, if I log in, I'll be only be able to see accounts and contracts that are created by me. If there's something that you have created, I'll not be able to see it. Okay. If it is set to private. So a recalculation happens whenever the sharing settings are modified. Okay. And once this is completed, you will get a notification email on your email address that the recalculation is completed. You should now have access to the new set of records. Okay. Now there are external users. The, the idea of external users to keep it separate is see people who are accessing the portal are not accessing the Salesforce org, meaning they should already have some restrictive access, right? Which is why we have opened the portal for them. We have opened the experience cloud site for them. We don't want them to access the standard capabilities or standard Salesforce objects or a lot of things that are available that might be sensitive, that might be data compliant, that might have some uh, data that we don't want um, uh, people to access. So that's why we create experience cloud portals and we create users there, correct? So. Salesforce provides the flexibility to set up and configure access for external users separately. All right. So which is why you see the second column here. So what you can do is you can define external access for the same object differently for the internal users and differently for the external users. All right. So this could be public read only and this could be private. You could do that. So you see when I change this to private, this stays private and this stays read only. Okay. Now, with experience cloud users, it's always a good practice to set the object setting to private for external users and public read only and read write for internal users, right? So ideally it is always said and it is always marked as a best practice that keep things private on the external side. You'll see which is why most of the settings are set to private. You see for the external users, it is set to private. Some are public read write. What you should ideally do is you should keep the setting as private and then you should open up access based on requirement. We'll understand how that can be done. But if you have seen the very inter introduction part of it, you, you know that you can create sharing rules, right? So you should always ensure that the end user should only have access to the data that they, he or she needs. They should never have more access because the more with, with uh, more power comes uh, more responsibility, right? That's the thing. If you get access to a lot more data than you are supposed to, you might end up messing it. You might end up using it. You might end up viewing it. You might end up sharing it, right? So external users are users who are not part of the core Salesforce ecosystem. They log into the site. So why to give access to things that they don't need access to? That's the primary idea, right? So you should always move this to private and then you should open up access by creating sharing rules. All right, that's the best practice. And for internal users, you can keep it to read only or read write because these are internal users. You don't have to worry because they are license based paid users who are accessing the Salesforce environment directly. All right. An interesting thing to note here is that the default external user access can either be equal or more restrictive than the internal user access. All right. What does this mean? This means that external users will always have either the same or less kind of access compared to the internal users. And that makes sense, right? If an internal user is set to public read only, the external user can only be set to private or public read only. The external user can never be public read write. Okay, let me just say cancel and let me show that to you and it will throw you an error. Okay, so let's first of all see the sharing recalculation. So I'm just saying edit 
and I'll just go ahead and say that all the account and contacts should be public read only for both internal and external. I'll say save. It says that they will be recalculated, which may require some time. So you will be notified by an email notification. Do you want to continue? I say OK. And this enables and starts the recalculation. See, one or more sharing operation has been initiated. See below for additional details. Now, if I go ahead and just try to, you see, this is currently set to public read write. This should change to public read only. OK, let's say refresh. So it's now public read only. So the sharing has been recalculated and now I'll not have access to edit any records. I'll have access to only see all the records, not edit them. OK, now let me show you something. Let's say edit. And what I want to do is the internal access stays read only. But I'm saying that the external access should be public read write, which is more than the internal access. Correct. So if I say save and I say OK. It says that the default access must be more restrictive or equal to the default internal access. So I cannot have anything beyond the public read only. I can have it either equal or I can have it less. So I'll say this will be private and I'll say safe. So that will allow me to say OK and it will do another recalculation of the sharing settings. OK, and this is for the external users. All right. Cool. So that was that note. Always ensure that you have a good practice to follow. You can keep the object setting to private for all the external users, irrespective of which object is it is. And you open up access based on the requirement. OK, and then the default external user access can either be the same or it can be less restrictive. Sorry, it can be more restrictive than the internal user access. So if you are a public read only internal user for an object, you will be either private or public read only for on the external side, not public read write on the external side. OK, what about guest users? So for guest users, there's no change that's available. The default access to all the objects is set as private. OK, and this cannot be changed. You don't get any access available here. To change. OK, so on the org sharing setting, there's nothing. So there's something on the community side where you get a guest user profile and you can configure. OK, so the default access will always be private and it cannot be changed. However, if you <clears throat> if you go to the site and you try to uh, go to the force.com uh, uh, go to force.com and you try to edit the profile. That's where you can add access. That's where you can open up access for the guest users. But here by default, it will always be private and it is not available to change also. OK. Awesome. Now let's talk about the different access levels. So you have been hearing a lot about private, public read, write, public read only. Manshu, what is this? Right? You're not you're, you're not explained this properly. So this is the time to explain the different access levels that are available. Okay. So these are the six primary key ac available access levels out of which I've talked about private, public read only, public read, write, controlled by parent. Right. And you'll notice that there are some special ones as well. So public full access is only available for campaigns. OK, public read, write transfer is only available for leads and cases. If you try to make sense of it, let's start from the beginning. Control by parent. What does this mean? This means that the access will be governed by the parent. Whatever is the access level of the parent, the same will be cascaded to the children. So example, if account is private opportunity and case will also be private. So you see if I say private, it says that the opportunity access must be private when the account access is set to private. Take a look at the opportunity here. This will also change. So you see this is now private. OK, so this is kind of controlled by parent, but it is on a standard object nomenclature, right? If I look at something more of a custom, let's say let's take a look at some custom objects down below. I don't see any control by parent. I might not have any master detail, but if you have a master detail relationship, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to see that you can only change the sharing settings of your parent and that will govern the sharing settings of your child if it is a master detail. OK, which means that the child is controlled by the parent. So channel program level is controlled by channel program. Channel program member is controlled by channel program because it says controlled by parent and this is your this is the parent. So if channel program is private, the members will also have the private sharing. 
for internal users and private for external users. Make sense? That's the first one. What's the second one? It says private. So private is nothing but, let me just quickly take a look at, okay. Yeah, so private is nothing but the records that you create are the only records you will have access to. Hear me again. The records that you create in the system, you will have access to only those records. You will not be able to see any other record. You will not be able to touch or modify any other record in the system. That is the meaning of private. Okay. So whatever records you create, let's say this account is private, right? So tomorrow, if you log into the system, you create an account. Will you be able to see accounts that Himanshu created? No, you will not be able to see it. You'll only be able to see accounts that you created and you can only play around with them. That's the meaning of private sharing. Okay. What is public read only? Try to guess. Public read only means whatever is available in the public is read only to me. Meaning if you log in tomorrow, you will be able to see your records just like private. But alongside that, you will get some more add-ons, some more benefits. You'll be able to see records created by everyone else. So Himanshu created some records, let's say eight records. Will you be able to see them? Yes, you'll be able to see them. But will you be able to touch and modify them? No, you cannot. They are public read only, meaning the things created by the public will be read only. Whatever you have created, you can modify. That's opening up the access to public read only. What is the next? The next one is public read write. This is the maximum access that you can have, meaning, yes, just like the name suggests, if you log in to your system. You can very well take a look at your records. You can modify them. But alongside that, you can also look at everyone else's records and you can modify those as well. That's public read write. Okay. Now, public read write transfer. As of now, we know this bit public read write. But why transfer? Because leads and cases have these are standard objects, right? Leads and cases. And they have a transfer mechanism, right? Leads can be transferred right? Cases can be transferred. One is from the sales cloud implementation, which is leads. And then you have the cases which are from the service cloud implementation. So there's the transfer option available. And this is only for these two objects, leads and cases. So you see leads have these three levels followed by the transfer option also. Okay. And then what about case? You'll see that same is with case. Okay, the next one is public full access. So public full access is only available for campaigns. You see, there are three levels and then public full access is one more level that's available only for campaigns. All right, so these are the primary access levels that are available. You should you are able to see some more, right? For example, price book has its own calendar has its own, but no other object will get these kind of uh, access levels. The primary access levels that you should be concerned with is the first four. Controlled by parent, private, public read only and public read write. All right. Great. So that was all about OWD or rather the sharing settings. Next, we'll take a look at roles, which is giving access through hierarchy. All right. So now let's talk about roles, right? Providing access through hierarchy. So if we want to grant access to people who are above our role in the hierarchy ladder, right? In such cases, we can use the checkbox that says grant access using hierarchies, right? And what this will do is this will enable the access for any user who's above our current role. All right, let's take a look at Salesforce uh, sharing settings page. We talked about the internal and the external access. That's on the sharing settings on the org wide defaults, correct? Alongside this, you have also something that's called grant access using hierarchies. This checkbox governs whether or not access will be given to people on the on top of us on the hierarchy lad ladder. All right. What you will notice is this checkbox. If I click on the edit button, This checkbox is disabled for all the standard objects, meaning it is selected by default for all the standard objects. However, for any custom objects, we can enable or disable it. If you disable it, you are trying to say the system that if I have a manager in the role hierarchy, do not grant access to my records to my manager. 
okay through the role hierarchy access sharing do not but if you are saying that okay grant access using hierarchies your manager will be able to see your records your manager's manager will be able to see the manager record manager's records as well as your records so that will be governed through role hierarchy if this checkbox is checked all right so this is the singular checkbox that's available that's available for all the objects now only for custom objects it is something that you can check or uncheck however for standard objects it is not something that you can play with all right so for standard objects it will always be implicit that access using hierarchies will be given okay now what is that access using hierarchy if you go to the roles page right if you go to set up roles you'll see that this is like let's say this is your role hierarchy and i'll just say expand all if you are someone from the customer support north america region the svp customer service and support who is the immediate parent of this particular role or people in this role will have access to all the records that this role owns correct now for those of you who, who don't know where the role is configured right so if i go to users so each user is assigned a role so if you take a look at this name right here i am the system administrator and i have a role of the chairman so this is where you can assign roles and each user is given a role it's not mandatory but you can set up a role so you see if i say i am customer support north america or i am customer support international i will be under the SVP customer services and support. So anyone from SVP customer services and support will be able to see my records because I am a I am one level down in the role hierarchy and because the grant access using hierarchy checkbox is checked. What happens if you don't check it? What happens if you don't check the checkbox for any custom object record? In that case, the person who is on top of the ladder or maybe one one step higher than you on the SVP level will not have access to the records that you own. Alright, so let's say for example, if you take a look at SVP sales and marketing, if I expand this, it has VP international, VP marketing, VP North American team, right? Then VP North American team has director channel sales and then the channel sales team. Let's say you are assigned the channel sales team role. What does that mean? This means that the director channel sales, the VP North American sales, the SVP sales marketing, the CEO, everyone will have access to your record that's the role hierarchy concept and that's how the sharing will work okay it will be implicitly shared because you have enabled the grant access using hierarchy checkbox all right now one important consideration to understand is if a user let's say through the profile level right where we give the crud permissions if the user has the view all data or modify all data permissions what does that mean that means you are able to see all data or see and modify all data in that case the access is automatically available even if this checkbox is disabled and that makes sense right even if grant access using hierarchies is not there if you have the view all or the modify all permission on your profile level what does that mean irrespective of any user's record you will be able to see all the data and if you have the modify all you'll be able to see all data and edit all data or modify all data so that checkbox does not make sense it it, it, it basically becomes irrelevant so if you have one of these two permissions, even if this checkbox is unchecked, the access is automatically available for all the records. All right. And that is that is true also, right? It makes logical. It, it makes logical sense. All right. A good to know thing. If a child object is removed from a master detail relationship. All right. So we are talking about a master detail relationship wherein you have a parent and a child and the child object is removed. Let's say we delete the master detail relationship. So in that case, the OWD or the sharing setting of the object is set to public read write and access using hierarchy checkbox is automatically set to true. Correct. Now, why is this important and why is it good to know? Normally, when you are in a master detail or your record is in a master detail relationship and you are a child object, right? What will be your sharing setting? It will be controlled by parent. Correct. So if it is controlled by parent and let's say you want to get rid of the relationship, what happens? Then you are free correct if you are out of a relationship then you are free to go anywhere and do anything that's why salesforce says 
or the OWD for the the child object that has been removed from the relationship will be set to the highest level, which is public read write, and the grant access checkbox will automatically be set to true. You don't have to set it. Okay. Now, whenever a user's role is changed, the sharing rule is reapplied based on the new role. Meaning, if I take a look at my user, right? I was assigned the chairman role. Correct. So, if I look at the chairman role, Himanshu will be assigned that role. If all of a sudden my role changes in the company, right? Then I should have access to the right kind of records. Correct. So, if let's say from chairman I move to the channel sales team, I will remove. I will not have access to all the records that the chairman has. I'll only have access to the records that the channel sales team role has. So the sharing settings that get reapplied or recalculated when we do an internal or external level access change applies here also. If a role is changed for a user, the sharing rule is reapplied based on the new role. All right. So that's two good to know things. Perfect. So that was all about role hierarchy. What we have discussed as of now is the uh, OWD, which is the org wide default, which is called the sharing settings, which has two different types, internal access and external access alongside the grant access using hierarchies checkbox, which is only available for custom objects. And it helps and it helps share records based on the role hierarchy concept. All right. Great. The next thing we are looking at is very interesting in this entire game of sharing and it is called sharing rules. What we have done as of now is we have looked at uh, the OWD setting that is from the platform, right? We can just configure private read only or read write role hierarchy. We can say grant access. We can assign roles. But now we are looking at opening up access based on criteria, based on who owns the record. That's when writing custom rules come into the picture and you create sharing rules. Okay, so sharing rules, everything has the keyword sharing, right? So don't get confused. Sharing rules is part of sharing setting. Sharing settings are the OWD settings, the org wide default, right? And sharing rules come under the scenario wherein you don't have access and you want to open up access by writing some rule which will be based or governed by a criteria or by some kind of rule. Okay, so let's say if Himanshu is the owner of this particular region's data, these four people should also get access to the same data because they work with him. So this is a custom rule, correct? In such cases, you have to create or configure a rule and that's called a sharing rule. Okay, so records owned by user A should always be shared with user X, Y and Z. That's a custom rule. Okay, records owned by any of the users from this particular portal should be shared with all of these roles, these seven roles. So you need to write custom sharing rules, which is basically nothing but sharing rules. And that is what we'll be discussing in our next section. Sharing rules is your way of opening up access once you have defined the org wide defaults as well as the role hierarchy. If I take you back to the graph this is our graph right so we talked about org wide defaults and then the role hierarchy now if you want to do any kind of lateral sharing when i say lateral sharing this means irrespective of role irrespective of hierarchy right across your organization let's say you want to work with another team member who's working off a different region that particular team member is not part of your role hierarchy in any which way you are not related how do you share records between you and your uh, other user in these scenarios sharing rules come into the picture right what about based on ownership based on a certain criteria that if this particular lead is created by this particular user or if this particular lead has this particular status value share this lead record with these three people or a group of people or some portal roles or some or, uh, subordinates how do you do that you create and configure sharing rules that is where sharing rules come into the picture all right so these are basically nothing but custom rules. And where can you write them? If I take a look at our Salesforce org, this is again available av available under the sharing settings. So if, if you go to sharing settings, you will see the list of all the objects showing up the internal and the external access. And it also so shows you the grant access using hierarchies, right? Down below, you'll see that for every object that is available, you have sharing rules uh, that you can write. So you can create a new sharing rule per object. Okay. What does that tell you? That tells you that you can do record level access sharing by writing sharing rules per object. Okay. 
so for example if we had to do something around let's say uh, the survey so survey sharing rules can be created all right if you have a custom object let's say you have a custom object called vehicle so you can create a sharing rule for the vehicle custom object all right what will this do this will only open up access based on what you've already provided right so now tell me this before we jump let's see what you learned from part one okay so if opportunity is public read write okay it's not private it's not public read only it's public read write what does that mean that means any and every user will be able to see any and every record and also modify it correct so think about this once your access is public read write do you need further access or do you need to open up access anymore no right because that's the maximum access you can have so sharing rules come into the picture or come into fruition only if you have something of a private access or let's say public read only access so if it is a private access you want to enable or enhance or open up the access to public read only or public read write that's where you can use sharing rules okay so for example here you have case which is case is private correct so you can open up the case access by writing a case sharing rule so you can say for these kind of users i want this not to be just private but i want it to be public read only so what are you doing you're finding or you're segmenting a set of users who need more access than you have defined on the org level for everyone so there are some special users who need read access to all the cases not just their own cases so you'll create a sharing rule okay let's say you have another use case wherein you have very very uh, ip or vvip people right there are seven people who are part of a public group and they need access to all the cases they should be able to see them and modify them so how do you do that you write a sharing rule and share the case records as public read write to only those seven people got it once we see a bit of a hands-on you'll understand what i'm trying to say okay let's look into the definition so sharing rules give specific users greater access by making automatic exceptions to the org wide default sharing settings right if you break this one sentence into four different parts or five different parts it will be easier to understand okay so sharing rules give specific users why specific users because we only want to cater to a segment of the users we are opening up access for a limited set of people all right you want to give what kind of access more access that's why greater access all right by making automatic exceptions so sharing rules one they, once they are configured they will be calculated they will be recalculated the entire sharing model will be recalculated and access to some records will be given based on the rules that have been configured okay and what they make exceptions to what they make exceptions to the org wide sharing setting that has been configured by default okay sharing rules can never be restrictive so that means you cannot write a sharing rule and say if this case internal access is public read only write a sharing rule to make it private no you cannot go down you can always open up access all right you cannot reduce the access in role higher in, in sharing settings you can only use sharing rules for opening up access make sense great so let's talk about the two kinds of sharing rules right so you can write something which is owner based or you can write something that is criteria based now understand this use case understand the examples it will give you better clarity okay so the first example is let's say you have some records so you have some contact records which are owned by a team called uk sales team united kingdom sales team all right and you want to check if the record that is owned by a specific user if that user is let's say Himanshu. In that case, I want to share all the UK sales team records to APAC sales team record, sales team. Okay, I think I messed it up. Let's let's do it again. So let's say that a record is owned by the UK sales team. Let's say that's a queue. Okay. If if a record is owned by this particular queue, I want to open up access for the same record to another queue that is called the APAC, APAC sales team. So all records of the United Kingdom sales team should be available to the Asia Pacific sales team. So what kind of sharing is this? Owner based sharing. If I own the record, there are three people who should get access to my record. What, if, what kind of sharing am I en enabling? I'm enabling owner based. Based on who is the owner, I'm defining what kind of sharing I want to configure. Okay, let's look at this on 
Salesforce. So if I create a new sharing rule on the case level, why am I creating on the case level? Because case is set as private. I should be able to open up access. Now you notice you have a label. So I'll say share cases owned by me. Okay, let's say just by me. You'll notice see the rule type has two different options, either by record owner or by criteria. That's the two options we are talking about here. Okay, ignore the third option for now. Just the two, the first two. This is for internal users. Okay, and external users who are community portal users. Okay, now you see when you choose record owner, you get an option. There is the next step. What does it say? Select which records do you want to share? So I'll say cases that are owned by members of a specific queue. What is that queue? This particular queue, for example. Correct. If a case is owned by one of the members of the case assignment queue, share it with a public group that is basically the accounting team, let's say. Okay, let me do the same example. Basically, let's try to use the same nomenclature so that you get a better idea. So let's create a queue that is UK sales team. So I'll quickly create some uh, queues and uh, public groups so that it is easy to understand UK sales team and I'll just enable it for case and queue members. I'll just add Iman here. All right, let's say save. Okay, let's create one more queue and that queue is called APAC sales team. All right, so let's create APAC sales team queue. I'll remove the extra spaces. And here this will also be for case. And let's say my friend G is in this particular queue. All right, so I have two different queues created now. Let's go back to sharing settings. Let's copy this particular name so that I don't have to type it again. Let's reload. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to say if our case record is owned by the UK sales team, it should be shared with the APAC sales team. So I'll say UK sales team case sharing. All right. Relevant name. I'll say based on the record owner. So case is owned by Q, which Q, the UK sales team should be shared with the users from. OK, I don't see the Q of coming up here. which means I cannot share it with queues. I can only share it with roles and public groups. OK, I think I might have written it somewhere on my uh, notes. So let's create a public group instead of a queue. So I'll create an APAC sales public group. So I'll call it APAC sales team. And I'll just add my friend on this particular list and I'll say save. So a public group is created. What I can now do is I can use this public group. It's not loading up here. I think I have to refresh. So based on record owner, I'll say cases owned by the UK sales team should be accessible to the APAC sales team public group and see what kind of access do I have available since the case access on the org level is private. I can only open up access. I can say either read only or I can give the maximum access that's called read write. Okay, so I'll say read only and I'll say save and it will say that I want to do a recalculation because you've created a new sharing rule. I say okay, go ahead. So I've created a sharing rule. All right. And now this sharing rule is created. Now, what does that mean? This means that if Himanshu, who's part of the UK sales team, creates a case, Himanshu will be able to see his case and uh, modify his case. That's it. Right. What about the other guy in the other uh, queue or the other public group? Will he be able to see it? If we did not configure the sharing rule, the other guy, Jeet, would not be able to see it right? Because the case sharing is private. However, we have configured a sharing rule. What does that sharing rule say that since the owner of the case record is part of the UK sales team, the case record is being shared with APAC sales team. So anyone who is part of the APAC sales team, meaning the one user that is available will be able to see the case, but will not be able to modify it. Cool. Do you want to see this live in action? Let's see. So let's go back to queues.
all right so as part of uk sales team himanshu is the member all right and as part of the other public group which is apac sales team this guy is the user jeet all right let me just quickly check if this user is active in the system let's go to user detail so the user is active in the system all right so let's now do this let's let me create a case record okay so himanshu will create a case record so i'll just go ahead and say new i'll associate it with a contact with an account status is new medium is the priority case reason is performance type is electronic origin is from let's say phone and mandatory fields are filled let's say save okay ah uh, it says storage limit exceeded let's say cancel let's remove this particular record okay i think i should be able to create one new record let's say new i'll associate brian dent all of this is here phone type case reason and say save somehow the storage limit is exceeded let's take a look at how many cases are created okay let me just go ahead and delete some records so since i am on a developer edition i have to i have very limited storage right and this is one of the errors that comes up if in case the storage is exceeded right so i'll just select id from case execute so there are five records let's go ahead and say delete these five records i don't want to open log i'll say oh, execute highlighted if i refresh the grid all the five records are gone let's also delete all the opportunities from the system okay i hope some space has now been emptied or freed let's go back and try it out so i'll go back and i'll say new let's try to associate fingers crossed save i still have the same error let me quickly check what's happening here so to set up i can take a look at storage usage what's wrong let's see which one have i exceeded so storage usage file storage is at 20 mb and i have already consumed so let me just go ahead and check what are the files that have been attached i'll just probably get rid of one of the files or two files yeah so i have a lot of files available here right so let's get rid of some files our storage usage refresh okay it's at 83% so we are good to go okay so sorry for the delay let's now jump into creating a case record let's get rid of this let's get rid of this as well okay and now let's create a new case so now himanshu is creating a new case all right so let's go ahead and say type is electrical case reason is performance origin is from email i'll say save all right so case is created now who should be able to access it himanshu because he's the owner and the case org wide setting is private which means tomorrow if another guy let's say lokesh comes in and tries to look at the record will he be able to see it no because the ownership or the org wide setting is private if it were public read only lokesh would be able to see it right but since this is private no one can see it except the owner and i am the owner who has created the record correct but now the question arises let's take a look at this case the current owner 
Simanshu. Let me just change the ownership to the UK APAC Q. I mean the UK sales team. So if I just change this to UK sales team and I say change owner. Now the ownership is in the UK sales team and this should trigger our sharing rule and it should recalculate the sharing. And now if I log in as G, the other user, I should be able to access this particular case record. Let's see if I can see it or not. Okay. So before doing this, let me do something. Let me remove the sharing rule first of all. Okay. So that you are able to see, okay, the user was not able to see it and now he's able to see it. Right. So that's a better way of testing out things. Let's go to sharing settings. Let's go to cases. And let's delete our sharing setting. Okay. I'll just go ahead and say edit. Oops. So this one right here, I want to delete it. Okay. I'll just say delete. So right now, if I log in as Jeet, will I be able to see the case? No, I will not be able to see the case because the sharing has been recalculated and the default access is private. So let me try logging in as Jeet and see if I'm able to see the record or not. Okay, let's try to search. So you see, the record is currently not visible. Okay, I don't have any, any access to the record. But now let's do something. Let's log out as Jeet. And now let's create the sharing rule again. Okay. based on record owner if it is owned by the UK sales team share it with the APAC sales team public group give them the read only access I'll say save you want to do a recalculation go ahead do it I don't have any issues with that so a sharing rule has been created and it has been recalculated because I don't see the message on top now let's go back and try to log in as Jeet one more time right this guy right here let's log in So if I try to search, I'm still not able to see it. Now there might be a problem on the metadata level settings, right? So let's log out from here. Let's log back in as Salesforce administrator. And I think the user or the profile that's associated to this user should have the read access on the object level for the org wide sharing to work, correct? So the metadata level setting, the underlying metadata settings have to be configured first. So let's do that. The underlying object permissions and field level permissions need to be configured. On top of that, these things will work. Correct? So let's go back. Let's check what profile is this guy assigned. So you'll see that Jeet is assigned the planogram designer profile. Now, what is this profile? This is of the Salesforce platform type license. Let's take a look at the object settings. Okay. And let's see if the cases are available. If I take a look at the object here, I cannot even access the cases. All right, because that's a limitation with the Salesforce platform license. So let's look at the standard user. What license is this user? This is the Salesforce license, right? So let's look at the standard user profile or let's take a look at this profile for our use case. Okay. So let's go to standard user profile. And let's look at the object settings. And let's see if cases are available. So cases are available and you have the read, create and edit option. Let's do something. Let's add this guy to the public group. Okay. Let's open the public group APAC sales team. And let's add one more user, which is of the standard user license. So I'll just go ahead and say users and I'll just add Shinji. Okay. Let's say save. Perfect. Now let's log in as Shinji and see if the case is accessible to us or not because of the sharing rule. All right. Let's go to user detail. And let's log in.
All right. If I take a look at the case, you see the case is accessible to me. All right. But see, let's 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 look at the case. The case is accessible, and if I try to let's say modify, and I try to say save. It says, oops, you don't have the necessary privileges to edit the record. Why? The reason is your org wide settings is private. And on top of that, you have been given a public read only sharing access on the sharing rule level. So write access or edit access to someone else's record is not available, which is why you're only able to see it, but you cannot touch or modify it. Make sense. Let's look at one more scenario. Let's log out as Shinji. You were able to see the record, right? Now let's remove the sharing rule. Let's see if the record is available or not. So the sharing rule will be clear, right? Let's remove the sharing rule and log in again and see if the access is still available. So I'll just go ahead and delete the sharing rule. Done. I'll just say delete. Yep, it's done. It is trying to recalculate the sharing. I'll refresh it one more time. And it's done. Now let's log in again as Shinji. And once we log in, we should not have access to the case record anymore. So I'm logged in as Shinji. And if I try to search the record, you see the record is no more visible. All right, so you don't see the record anymore. The cases list is zero. So that's how sharing rules work. Does that make sense? I know it, we, we took a very long route of understanding just one small thing, but I think it is helpful. Everything that you see on the screen, everything that you see me fix is helpful, right? Storage limit exceeded. So I cleared up the storage. I took a look at what was exceeding. I was first deleting records, but my file storage was exceeded. So I deleted some files and then we were able to empty the org recycle bin and we got some free storage. Then I was trying to access a user who did not have the case object access at all. Why? Because that user was of the profile which was from the Salesforce platform license. So that means Salesforce platform license users don't have access to certain objects, one of which is case. Right, which is why we shifted to a new user. But not just shifting would work. We added that user to the public group. As soon as we added that user to the public group, the sharing rule was recalculated and that user got access to the case, right? But that user did not get, get access entirely. That user was only able to see the case because that's the only access we opened up. Because it was a private sharing, we said that it can be public read only, but not read write, which is why when I tried to edit it as Shinji, I got an error, okay? I don't have the necessary privileges. And those privileges come from where? They come from the sharing settings. They come from the sharing rules. They come from the org wide defaults. They come from the role hierarchy, right? So anytime you see this error, oops, you don't have the necessary privileges. You can be sure that this is something to do with sharing some part of it. All right. So that was sharing rule. And as soon as we removed the sharing uh, setting, uh, the sharing rule, the user lost access entirely because the default internal access is private. And if it is private, only the person who has created the record will be able to see it. No one else. All right. So that was all about record based or owner based sharing rules. Right. Owner based. Now, if, I, if you take a look at the sharing rules one more time, let's get rid of all the other tabs. Let's refresh this one more time. If you take a look at the sharing rule that we created, or let's create one more. What are the possible options available? You can check the ownership of what kind of people. You can check public group. You can check queues. You can check roles. You can check portal subordinates also. So all the roles are available here. All right. And who can you share it with? See, we cannot share it with queues, right? We cannot share it with queues because the queues option is available to choose which records, but it's not available to whom to share it with. All right. So we can only share it with public groups, roles, internal and portal. Okay. And what kind of access can we give? We can only open up access on top of the access given on the OWD level. That was based on record owner. A lot of things are similar based on criteria. The only thing is instead of the ownership, you get to choose a criteria. That's all.
you see the share with option is same the access option is same it's just that you can choose what criteria do you want to define instead of who is the record owner you can choose a specific criteria meaning let's take an example share the records that are with the IT public group if department field is set to IT meaning if the field case let's take a random option web company equals IT in that case share it with the public group that is the APAC sales team make sense can you add multiple criteria yes you can say if the case origin equal to you can get a pick list option because it is a pick list so I'll say it is either phone or email in that case share it with a role which role let's say share it with the chairman can be done okay let's say you want to do you don't want to say and you want to say either or you can simply click on add filter logic and you can just say one or two can be done okay let's say you have added five filters you want to add the sixth filter you can simply say add row and you can add six filters set up your filter logic and sharing will work based on the logic that you've added make sense that is your based on criteria option all right so i'm not going deep dive into the criteria base it is pretty much same as the owner base sharing you can give it a try all right a quick note how many sharing rules can be defined in total for an object a maximum of 300 sharing rules can be defined okay but out of which criteria based rules can only be 50 maximum 50 you cannot go beyond 50 what does that tell you that tells you you can create a maximum of 250 uh, record own, owned based and 50 criteria based all right so that was all about sharing rules Try this probably with one or two users. Try to create rules for two or three different objects and then also try to see by logging in just how I logged in with the user and try to see the record, find the record, edit the record, change the record. Correct? Try to do those kind of exercises and you'll be able to figure out what sharing settings is or what sharing rule is, not sharing settings. Okay? If you need more use cases, if you need practice examples, if you want um, some specific use cases that Iman Shur, can you show me uh, actual real time example of let's say three different profiles um, trying to access four different type of records. Can you show me a very nice sharing setting based on three or four different conditions? I can do that. I just need a comment if you need it. All right. So that's sharing rules. And next we'll jump into the next part of opening up access which is manual sharing right so this comes in after you have done everything right so when i say everything i mean this particular uh, pyramid right here so you have given the underlying object permissions right you have given the underlying object level permissions create read edit delete and then you have also given the field level permissions which field should be accessible to what user or profile via profile permissions or permission set and then to access the records you have defined org wide defaults so let's say for an object called case you have defined the setting as private and then you have enabled role hierarchy and you have said that okay for cases grant access using hierarchies meaning if i have created a record i am the record owner my manager should be able to see my record so that will be enabled via the role hierarchy and then because we wanted to enable access or open up access for more users so we created some public groups and public groups and queues and we created sharing rules we created custom rules wherein we said that okay if this is the record which is owned by this particular user xyz share this record with these 10 people who are part of this public group or who are part of this particular role so that's where we have created the sharing rule now a time comes when you have done all of it but you might have a requirement as to give some ad hoc sharing to a specific user for a specific record right the sharing rules and the sharing settings that we have written and configured till now apply to all the records for the object correct now what if you want to do something on a specific record just for one record you want to do something like if Himanshu owns this record, he wants to share it with some other person. He wants to manually share it. He does not want to rely on a rule or a criteria. So how can he do it? There are 
two interfaces for manual sharing like the platform provides there is the classic experience and there's the lightning experience okay and what you will notice is on every record you get a share button or a sharing button do you want to check it out let's go to salesforce so let's open our account record for example so if i go and open the accounts tab and take a look at the records i want to work on this specific record right i'm working on this record and i'm looking at this record i want to uh, talk to this account i want to check what is their annual revenue i want to see how many invoices they have created uh, i want to i want to you know assign them a customer id but let's say i'm not able to do all of this there is some other person from some another team who can take up this work right in that case this new user should be able to access this record now assume that the owd setting is private okay now how will this other user get access to the record and only this trailed record that we are talking so if i create a sharing rule i will be able to share all the records owned by himanshu to the user but i don't want to do that i want to do it on a record to record basis so i just want to share this particular record so this right now here is the lightning experience right and on the highlights panel you see a lot of options these are called quick actions right and one of the buttons available here is called sharing and this enables you to manually share this particular record with a set of users individual user or maybe a role okay so you can find or search your users here right you can find and search your users what you can also do is instead of users you can choose partner users portal users public groups roles and all of these options so if you want to go with a pub public group you can say i want to share it with the apac sales team group right so this would happen on a record to record basis meaning the trailed account record will be shared with this specific user correct so if i do this it tells me what kind of access do you want to give for account i have two options because the owd is private i can only give i can only open up access correct so read only or read write so i want him to be able to read and write what about case i'll say he should be able to see the cases and he should be able to modify the opportunity i'll say save so this shares the trailed account record just one record manually to shinje because of the sharing that i did using the button and this button is the button available on lightning experience okay if i go to let's say quotes let's see if i have any quote records available so we don't have any quotes let's take a look at maybe something let's take a look at cases let's take a look at case so there are no buttons available here right so that means we might be able to add in the button if you change the compact layout all right how do you do that if i go to edit object i can go to the page layout and i can add the quick actions all right but there are certain objects which do not have the sharing option at all okay so if i go to case page layouts let's quickly see let's take this case layout So when we modify the case layout you should see a sharing button enabled and this is something that's available in both lightning and classic all right so i'll go to mobile and lightning actions because right now we are on the uh, lightning version here you will notice there's a button that's called sharing so i'll just get this button and i need to drop it here so i'll just say override the predefined actions and the sharing button is now available here i'll just say save and now let's refresh our case page let's see so i still don't see it maybe the wrong page layout is assigned so if i just go back if i let's say go back to edit setup oh we are here and i'll just say go to page layouts assignment let's see for the system admin what layout is assigned okay so this how we roll layout is assigned let's remove it and let's change it with the case layout okay so i'll just say choose the case layout and i want to go to the system administrator and i'll say set it as the case layout correct and i'll say save now that i save it i'll refresh my case record page and i should see some more buttons coming up on the highlights panel i still don't see the buttons why is that the case layout is assigned to the system admin which is good let's refresh one more time 
let's go to let's try to log out and log in sometimes cache is the issue I'll just try to log out and log in once So I still don't see the buttons. This could be now on the record page. So I'll just go ahead and say edit page. Let's see. It might have been hidden on the page layout, uh, record page level. So let's go ahead and check. So this is the enhanced case layout. Let's click on the highlights panel. And you'll notice that only one action has been enabled. Correct. So instead of this, if I go ahead and try to add an action, I should be able to say sharing. And since it is added on the page layout, it should be visible here. Okay, so I just said save. Let's go back now. And now I should see the sharing button. So you see, to get a button, you need to check so many things. First, you need to check the page layout. It is assigned on the page layout. Then you check the assignment, if the profile is assigned the right page or not. And then you check, if even if it's still not showing, you come and modify the record page because it was hidden here. I just added the button and now the sharing option is available. Same thing, correct? Now, what when you are doing this on the account level, you saw three options, account, case and opportunity and you are doing it on the case level, you are getting only case. Why? Because of the relationship fields. Opportunity is a child of account, right? And it's completely dependent on how the account sharing will work. That's why you get any case or opportunity that is a child of account, you can set the sharing, uh, manual sharing for those objects also if you are doing it for account but if you are doing for an individual independent object you'll be able to only set it for that particular object and why are you seeing read only and read write because the you only open up access and, and it is private currently on the OWD you can just open up by saying read only or maybe read write all right how do you see who all are already given a uh, access to this record you see this particular line that says shared with one group of users if you click on edit it says that the UK sales team queue currently has the entire access on case and this is because our sharing rule okay and if you want to see the hierarchy you have the sharing hierarchy available also so you'll see that Himanshu who's the record owner has full access the integration security and the Shinji user have read-only access to the case so you can see everything about the case, the sharing history, the sharing details, uh, what kind of access a specific user has, who all are able to see it or view it, everything is visible. And if you want to add more people, add more roles, add more users or groups, you can do it by clicking the sharing button. All right, that was the lightning experience and it is only available for a limited set of objects using the sharing button. So in case, see in our case, we looked at the case, right? The sharing button was not available, but it was not available because it was not part of the layout. But there are some objects that wherein sharing is not enabled by Salesforce itself. So take a look at the documentation in case you are looking for sharing for a specific object. Okay, but it is available for most of the objects. If in case you don't get it on lightning, try to switch to the classic experience and you should see the share button. How do you do that? This is this classic experience right here. Okay, so let's go to accounts, trailhead, and if I click on the bear icon here, and I can say switch to Salesforce Classic. All right, so this is the previous uh, UI that Salesforce had, right? This is something that we, uh, I mean, I, I have started working with, um, which is why I feel I work faster in the classic experience and now the lightning experience. So if I open this particular account, you'll see there's a sharing button available on the classic experience and it is pretty much the same thing. You see the people who have access, you see what kind of access do they hold and then you can also add more people and the same list is show, shown up here the same kind of options it's just that the ui is different that's it okay so this is how you can do manual sharing now if someone asks manual sharing can be done for multiple records at once ideally no you would want to write a sharing rule right manual sharing is specifically for scenarios wherein you want to do it for a specific record correct if you had to do it for multiple records why do manually one by one you can simply create a sharing rule correct so in cases wherein you are not doing it for multiple users it is on a scenario to scenario basis for a use case to use case basis requirement to requirement basis you can use manual sharing and you can use this information to understand which users in your system have access to what records 
all right so that was i think all about manual sharing the next bit coming up is the apex managed sharing everything that we did till now is configurable actions everything is from the platform we are just configuring point and click selecting and un unselecting and then say seeing things work like magic but if you have a use case wherein the use case is a bit technical when i say technical i mean you have a lot of criteria that cannot be achieved by the standard sharing rule or maybe the standard owd right in that case how do you enable sharing for example if a specific account whenever it is created is of the type prospect has an annual revenue more than 60000 is currently owned by the customer portal user abc and maybe two or three other criteria in such case you need to share this particular account record or, or any of these kind of records to a certain set of people those people are not fixed you should be able to share them to people who are part of this particular profile or this particular permission set how do you handle this kind of scenario to share records that's where apex managed sharing comes into the picture wherein you share the records by writing some custom code by writing apex okay i know apex is something that has not come on my channel yet as a series but that's the very next thing that's coming up i you you can take this as the uh, uh, inaugurational uh, welcome message for the apex master class right after these set of videos the apex uh, curriculum is coming live and it will be a pretty good uh, series of pretty much everything that you need to learn and write server side apex language from start right from the very beginning from the very basic so that's that's something that's coming up next that's something i'm working on right now all right but for this particular example this particular use case we'll try to understand how how does it work okay so apex ma manage sharing sharing enables the record level access control for all custom objects as well as many standard objects all right now the admin can first set the owd they can then grant additional access by record ownership role hierarchy sharing rules and manage manual sharing on top of it if there is a requirement developers can then write apex to grant additional access programmatically by with using apex so if there is a requirement to programmatically handle sharing requirements right provide enable pri provide or enable access to a certain set of users based on, based on a criteria that can only be handled programmatically that's when developers come to the picture and they write apex managed sharing uh, custom code how do they do it let's take a look at the snippet okay so to access sharing programmatically you must use the share object now what happens is every object that you have name a random object what did you say account contact lead some custom object abc case every object has an inherent share object if you say account you can all there's always a share object account share if you say contact there's always a contact share object if it is a custom object which is called custom object underscore underscore c there is a share object for it that's called custom object underscore underscore share and this is something salesforce creates automatically and keeps and you can leverage this you can use this to enable access or share records do you want to see this in live action let's take a look at the developer console what do we do normally we normally query the account records right so if i say select id comma name from account how many records do we see 15 records let's talk about trailed record that we are working on Let, let's talk about himanshu m right so this is the record now there's an object that's called account share so if i say account share and if i say select id comma user or group id comma parent id this will be account id where account id equals this particular himanshu's record i have just pasting this id and let's put the access level field as well let's say execute let's remove this i think it should be called access type so you see there is one person which can be a user or a group who has access to this particular account 
let's take a look at what is the name of the account it should be himanshu m correct so let's say account dot name so himanshu m who has access to it let's see user or group dot name let's put the name here so you see the user who's the owner has access to the record but this is not a relevant example let's try something else so let's say account dot name equals trailed let's look at that because that is shared with multiple people right let me get rid of the name here so that i can show you the ids first so you see the trailed account there's only one account but there are sh uh, four account share records see four account share records what do you see with some you see something different here you see the user or group id this is the people who have access to the record account the first three are users the fourth one is a group you see 0050050005 user records start with 005 correct and 00g is for public groups groups or queues right so if i go ahead and try to show you what are the names of these uh users or groups if i say execute it says integration user himanshu shinje and uk sales team these are the four set of people who have access to the account record trailhead and how are you able to fetch this information by querying the account share record okay this another important field that's called row cause row cause execute this tells you what kind of sharing is applied so take a look here himanshu maheshwari has access to trailed account why because he is the record owner okay integration user and shinje have been given access by manual sharing or row cause equal to manual that's the default level and the implicit parent is uk sales team because role hierarchy is enabled uk sales team is getting access because it is the implicit parent of the owner all right so this is the role hierarchy coming into the picture this is manual row cause and this one right here is the ownership so you see how salesforce structures the entire sharing concept on record to record level you can open any record into your system you can just write the query to query the share object record if you want to do contact share so you have to, you have to query, query the contact share object if you want to do lead share so you'll have to do lead share basically the name of the object followed by the share keyword now if it is a custom object the only change that comes is if the object name is let's say abc underscore underscore c you just need to remove the c and you can just query the share record like this so if i say select id from opportunity share this is a standard object share so i'm getting the query i'm not getting errors if i say custom obj share which is another object that i have yeah i think i'm getting the records now right so the custom obj is one object that i have let's open this object custom obj so you see the share object record is available here the share object is available correct so if i want to take a look at the id parent id access level row cause user or group id i can simply say query and i can execute okay and this will give me the entire data of a of all the records being shared if you want to look at a specific record you take a look at the parent id you put that on the where clause all right great now looking at the actual syntax of how to write the apex code so that you can actually create a sharing record manually so what you have to do is you have to instantiate your share object record correct so for example this is the object name my obj you, you can simply say my obj underscore underscore share equal to new my obj underscore underscore share and then you have to just fill in these four fields first of all you need to associate what record is the parent for which you are enabling the sharing so that's the parent id field second one is the id of the user or group or the set of users who need access to the record so user or group id third one is what kind of access do you want to give it to them read write read write what exact access is required okay and the fourth one is row cause row cause is a flag that you can use to track what kind of access has been given salesforce uses the keyword manual as the default value if it is a role hierarchy thing it will use the keyword implicit parent if you want to say custom let's say if you want to say uh, apex managed so you can even give that value it is available 
right so row cost can be set to any value to understand why the record has been shared this can help you in debugging later and once you have set all the record uh, all the field variables you can simply say database dot insert obj share okay and you can just say false or you can simply say insert obj share two ways of inserting into salesforce all right do you want to try it out right now let's go to anonymous window let's get rid of this code and let's say i want to share the account record trailhead or let's say i want to share the himanshu's record right so if i get rid of everything here and if i open this particular record himanshu's record right so i think access level from account share is not available so let's get rid of it let's say execute so currently only one user has the access to the record because the owd is set to private there is no sharing rule that on this particular record and we have not given any manual sharing okay well, now first of all let's do something let's write this snippet okay so what i'll do is i'll say account share I'll instantiate it. Now share rec dot first is the parent ID. Now since this is account share, it will be called account ID the field. Okay, which is the account ID? Let me just pick it up from here. I'm just doing a static static mapping right now just to show you an entry. Okay, what is the second thing? I want to give a row cause right. So I'll say row cause explicit. apex sharing let's give this keyword share rec dot user or group id who do you want to share it with let's share it with shinjes user okay so i'll just go back to shinjes user and i'll try to share it i'll just put the user id here so shinjes user is this one right here so i'll just pick up this id i'll go back here right and let's keep focusing our eyes on this particular sharing information right so once everything is set i'll simply say insert share rec okay let's execute this code block i'll say execute so it says bad value for row cause let me just go ahead and say i'll just try manual it says account access field is missing so there should be one more field and it is not just the access level because it's the account share it is called account access level and i want to let's say provide read access all right so i've set the account id which is the parent id i've set the row cause as manual i think this should be configurable but we'll check that later okay for now i've used this value that salesforce accepts user or group id is a new user i want to share the record with and then the account access level okay which i have given as read so once i execute all right so we'll have to look at what combinations work but what i've tried to do is create a or rather insert a record okay and when i click on refresh grid here now you'll see that there are two sharing records created the second one is the manual one that we have created if you want to make sure we can simply take this query again and see that this particular record which was himanshu m is now also shared with shinje tashi because we shared it explicitly by writing apex code so you see himanshu m record was previously only shared with the owner now it is also shared with shinje tashi which has been done programmatically based on maybe some requirement all right so can i assign a public group here yes i can do that that's also possible all right if you want to create multiple share records you have to run that in iteration add this to a list and insert the list that can also be done okay we'll have to look at what are the potential and possible access levels for this particular requirement because it was the account share object we have to do things like account access level the child opportunity access level but if you are doing something of a custom object you don't need these things you simply need share rec dot access level that's it just for that particular record no other record is needed okay row cause i think can be other values but for now we have just put it as manual 
and the account ID will become parent ID if you are doing any custom object share. Okay, that's the change in the share object. If you are not sure about what are the exact fields to use, you can always go to the developer console and let's say for example I want to look at let's see if I want to look at share.obj so you see these are all the share objects case share campaign share business type boat type share this is a custom object so you see parent id user or group id access level and row cause all right then you have asset share account share all of the share objects are implicitly inherently available you don't create it i don't create it they get created by salesforce and we can use it to create or configure sharing records and those sharing records help in defining and governing the access of the users all right so far so good awesome so that was all about apex manage sharing which was writing custom code to handle sharing programmatically all right the final nail on the coffin in sharing settings if we go back here to our pyramid right we talked about the underlying permissions we talked about the owd we talked about role hierarchy sharing rules and manual sharing so far everything that we have been doing is opening up access right but then this was not enough for the salesforce platform right just because we are opening up access there were still requirements of how can i still kind of restrict or put a scope of the kind of records that the user should get access to let's assume that himanshu has access to 174 records but when he is accessing the system i only want him to see 168 records i want to filter out the six records i don't want him to see it i want him to restrict it how do i restrict it that's when salesforce came up with restriction rules all right so there are two kinds of concepts that are relatively new in the sharing space one is called restriction rules and the second is called scoping so these are not kind of sharing they are not sharing sharing but they are more like restricting and filtering records okay so if in an interview someone asks like what are the potential ways to share records you can talk about the owd you can talk about the role you can talk about sharing rules you can talk about manual sharing you can talk about custom apex sharing and then you can say that even after all this if you want to restrict a specific kind of set of records we can use restriction rules if you want to filter out a set of records it we can use scoping rules all right let's quickly understand the difference between the two so i've created a separate video wherein you see this in action but for now let's talk about what these mean okay so let's read this out restriction rule when a restriction rule is applied to a user the records that the user is granted access to via the owd sharing rules and any other sharing mechanisms are filtered by the criteria that you specify okay for example if users today navigate to the today's tasks tab or to a list view for activities they will only see the records that meet the restriction rules criteria all right and if a user let's say has a link has a short link to the record if it is not accessible after the restriction rule is applied they will see a error message they will not be able to access the record okay what does that mean this kind of means that the set the subset of OWD setting on top of it the sharing setting on top of it the sharing rules on top of it manual sharing and any other sharing mechanism after everything is calculated on top of it restriction rules are applied so if after everything all the calculations you as a user are entitled to see 78 records and then restriction rules can neglect or remove the other 8 10 records that you're supposed to see so you'll end up seeing only 67 or 68 records make sense let's take a look at the salesforce side of the world so if i go to switch to lightning experience here where are these available let's see so where would you apply the rules you would apply it on the object level so if i go to setup and if i go to an object let's open let's say let's go to object manager let's open the custom obj that we created and we have so if I go to custom OBJ, you'll notice that you have restriction rules available here. Okay. Now restriction rules currently are not available for all objects. So if you want to take a look at what objects it is currently available for, take a look at the considerations and limitations in the help article. Okay. So restriction rule considerations. So you can read more about it, which kind of objects are currently enabled for restriction rules, what kind of objects are allowed, what kind of filters you can put, how can you restrict, everything is available. 
okay so restriction rules are currently available for custom objects and external objects and these objects so it, they are not available for standard objects okay so similarly scoping rules you can take a look at the scoping rule considerations they are the same thing okay so you can just take a look at this information now if you go to custom object you can go to restriction rules and you'll see i hope there would be a diagram yes so you see this diagram explains what i was trying to tell you so by sharing by granting access or by opening access you use owd and you use all the sharing mechanisms and then on top of it you, you use filtering by adding a restriction rule so whatever you have access to is filtered and then given to the user all right so if you have to create a new rule you'll create it here and here you'll just give it a name filter out east germany records okay so i can say this will be an active restriction rule and i can put the user criteria so you see you can put a user criteria saying if the user belongs to a specific department for example so this is from the user object if if they belong from a specific country right if they belong from a specific locale right if they are from a specific let's say time zone if they are if they are if they are active or not so those kind of things you can put a check here or you can also put the permission check if the user has the specific permission okay and this would be like permission set i currently don't have any permission set here but you will be able to filter out the permission sets available okay so if the user is assigned a particular permission set right in that case i want to select which records the user is able to see so i can say for example i can say the user criteria i can say if the user is from a specific locale and that locale is let's say germany which is for germany filtering i can simply say the criteria type would be the record field i want to say that this user should only be able to see the records which are part of the denmark region make sense so when this user logs in right when any user logs in the system will apply the sharing rule the system will check the owd for this object the system will check all the sharing settings then it will find a set of records for this user to see but before showing it to the user they'll also filter out by using the restriction rule so they'll see okay there's a restriction rule that is currently active what does it say is the user's local from germany i'll check the currently logged in user is from germany or not i mean the local is from germany or not oh yes it is from Ger germany so salesforce will only show them the records the total records that came out after the sharing cons sharing calculation it will only show the records where the records of the region denmark or sap make sense did it make sense so it is restricting the access of the entire set of data that is available because of the sharing settings that is what it means okay and the only difference between restriction rules and scoping rules is scoping rules will not restrict but scoping rule will not let the user see meaning you will still continue to have access to the 78 records that you have through the sharing rules but because a scoping rule is applied you'll be only be able to see 68 records you'll not be able to see the six records but if someone gives a link will you be able to open it yes you can open it because it is not restricted it is just scoped that's why they are called scoping rules okay let's read it use scoping rules when you want to let users control the record set that they see a scoping rule does not restrict the user's access to other records instead they let your users focus on one set of records okay so scoping rules are flexible you can enable and disable them on a query by query basis plus they don't restrict the access that your user have to record so this will not remove or reduce the access but these will these will do it restriction rules will reduce the access it will filter scoping rules will not okay where are scoping rules available let's quickly check scoping rules are also available sorry they are also available on the object level they are not available looks like so if i just quickly check yeah so it says that it is only available in performance and unlimited editions right which is why i'm not able to see it but if you're able to see it you'll be able to configure what kind of scoping you can apply and once that scope scoping rule is configured and created you will be able to see a filter coming up here based on scope okay so for example if you have vehicles and if you have like let's say 80 records that you are seeing in vehicles you want to scope it out 
to only a set of records so based on the scoping rule defined you can choose filter by not all not my you can filter by scope okay so that is something that you can do so instead of filter by owner you can also filter by scope that is something that's available so i might not be able to show you because it's not available for my developer edition it's available for performance and unlimited let me just check if i have let me just use the keyword available let's check standard custom let me take a look at the user object once all right so if i go to the user object no i don't have access right so i don't see access to most of the objects i'll just check one or two before i conclude this just so that i could show you how it looks like so if i go to medication nope it's not here right so ideally you'll see this right below the restriction rules you'll see it here okay you might have to check this in a normal org that you are working on or uh, working with on a project right developer edition might not work so in order to create scoping rules you'll have to create you'll have to you know uh, be on a uh, on an actual org to be able to uh, take advantage of it and once you create or configure a scoping rule it will be available here on the filter by option you'll be able to see it here on a list view level you can just say filter by scope and it will filter your records based on the scope meaning the access is not gone it's just that you are able to see it in a sub you are able to see a subset of records that you want to currently focus in that's the that's the difference that's it all right so you don't have to worry much about it okay so that was all about restriction rules and scoping rules now talking about an important thing which is the common errors that are encountered due to sharing settings and rules so we get n number of errors as developers we have to debug a lot of issues right when there are multiple objects that are interlinked a lot of sharing has been written region wise locale wise condition wise ownership wise there is the portal user there is the internal user a lot of issues come up when access is not correctly defined right so what are those errors that can hint hint towards okay this is a sharing issue is what i have listed here okay so remember we saw the oops insufficient privileges that tells you that there is something wrong with the sharing all right if you see something like record access denied or if you see something like role hierarchy issues if you see sharing rule limit exceeded all of this will basically be a, a hint that okay something is wrong with the sharing settings okay what could go wrong let's talk about certain scenarios if you don't have access to modify a record you have access only to read the record you will be given this error insufficient privileges when you try to edit the record correct let's say you have a link to a record but sharing have sharing settings have changed and you no longer have access to it so when you try to open it it will not let you open the record which means the access will be denied okay let's say for a specific custom object you have not enabled the checkbox grant access using hierarchies and your manager's manager is saying why am i not able to see himanshu's records that's because the role hierarchy setting is not completely done properly okay what if you ended up creating 50 criteria based sharing rules and then you are trying to create the 51st one because we only can create 50 sharing rules for criteria based it will give you a limit exceeded error okay then you might have something around field level security violations field level security violations mean you only have read access but you are trying to modify it it will not let you do it for this is a scenario wherein you are trying to edit a field from apex let's say okay let's say you have shared the entire objects records to the public group to let's say four public group but a user is not part of that public group and that user has raised a case saying i am not able to see the records that is a public group sharing error you'll go to the public group for which the sharing rule is defined you'll check if the user is part of that public group or not if not you'll just simply add the user and the sharing will be recalculated manual sharing issues so let's say someone is leaving the organization so we want to remove access of that particular user to all the records that he or she had access to so people might have given manual sharing to that user for certain work so we have to identify that by querying the share record so you can check what kind of records does this user have access to and you can delete those share records and then access will automatically be resolved okay apex sharing errors similar to what we saw today if you want to do account uh, sharing you have to enable and you have to configure the account access level and the opportunity access level 
okay if you are trying to do some custom object you have to define a row cause you have to define which user or group to set let's say you have added an incorrect user let's say instead of putting the user id you put the profile id you will get a sharing error on the apex side okay criteria based sharing rule error let's say you define the criteria that people who are part of the germany locale and for accounts where the revenue is more than 20000 share the records to this particular public group all right and the public group that you assigned is wrong it's a different one compared to what the business expected so that criteria based sharing rule will share the records to the wrong set of people okay org wide default mix misconfiguration let's say you enabled public read write on the con on on let's say some custom object for portal users so now portal users are able to modify all the contacts they're able to edit any and every field they're able to change your birth date they're able to change the email address and everything that's wrong they should not be able to do it as per business so that might be a misconfiguration on the org wide default settings so you need to fix it there by making it either read only or private okay so these are pretty much most of the potential issues that you will normally face with sharing and whenever one of this happens you can follow a checklist what all do i need to check you don't have to panic you don't have to worry about oh shit how what went wrong how did it go wrong you can simply look at this set of things you can look at the owd first you can look at the role hierarchy you can take if the use you can check if the user is assigned to the public group or not you can check the manual sharing you can query the share record and see who are currently being given access and all of it okay so when you when you drill down and when you do it step by step you don't you, you won't feel overwhelmed and you will not feel like okay something something big has happened something massive has gone wrong no nothing like that okay and you'll be able to get on top of it and resolve it all right so that concludes the sharing settings video which i thought i would do a single explained video but then i realized that it is a very big very huge topic i hope i was able to convey good amount of information for you and you are able to understand at least 60 70 percent of the sharing that would be really good for me if if the video the part one part two part three are helpful please comment and tell me that you know okay yes uh, this is something that has helped and uh, that would be great all right now coming to the quiz time to see what you learned let's take a look at the first question if you have to look at a list view record based on the scope defined for you what rule would you configure will you configure permission sets will you configure sharing sets will you configure restriction rules or will you configure scoping rules so the correct answer is scoping rules d scoping rules right so because you want to look at a list view records and you want to define a scope right so you can filter by scope you will use scoping rules question number two one profile can be assigned to multiple users but one permission set cannot be true or false so the question is a you multiple users can have the same profile assigned but can a single permission set be assigned to multiple users yes or no can you assign permission set to multiple users yes you can so this statement is false so this should be false it is false f okay you can assign a profile to multiple users you can assign a permission set to multiple users if you have a custom object that's called bank underscore details underscore underscore c what would be the name of the share object for the same would it be bank underscore details underscore underscore share would it be bank underscore details underscore underscore r would it be underscore underscore c underscore share or would it be simply share underscore bank underscore details underscore underscore c it should be the first one right it should be the first one because instead of just the c you just need to replace it with a share keyword so a is the correct answer question number four how can you share records owned by you with your manager's manager I think this is pretty straightforward. Everyone knows the answer. Is it manual sharing? No, it is Apex West sharing, right? No, even that's incorrect. Is it permission sets? No, this is role hierarchy. Let's check. It is B role hierarchy. Whenever it's about a manager or manager's manager or some subordinate, always understand, okay, they are talking about role hierarchy.